Hey everybody, welcome back to the book of Revelation Bible Study. This is Lesson 2. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church. We're going through the book of Revelation in small, little, bite-sized chunks, maybe 10-15 minutes at a time, and you're free to get out your Bible and go along with us. We're still in chapter 1. We've only gone through the first four verses, and here we are in Revelation 1, verse 5. Um, John has just finished a greeting from both himself, uh, God, and the Holy Spirit. And then he says in verse 5, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. All right, here's an easy question. Who is that? Right? We always think that Revelation is difficult to read, hard to understand, but come on. Who is that? That's, that's Jesus. Right, exactly. You know the answer to that. Um, verse 5 says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. I hope that you all believe that right now. I hope that you all know that that Jesus Christ loves you, that Jesus Christ has freed you, and that Jesus Christ saves you with his blood. Three really important things right there at the top. Jesus loves you, just like the song says that we learned when we were kids, more than anybody else, Jesus loves you. And if you believe that, regardless of whatever has happened in your life, whatever has happened in the past, whatever you've done, right? Whatever mistakes you look back on the history of your life and think, ah, I worried about that, didn't like that, that was the wrong choice. You know, we, we worry about our past, we dwell on our past, even though it's gone and we can't do anything about it. We also worry about our future. Here we are in the middle of 2020 and we're looking ahead and when there's a huge question mark and we don't know what's coming, if you can know in your heart that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. That can be some of the biggest assurance and biggest hope we could ever have. Second, that he's freed us from our sins. Do you believe that? I mean, yes, we're aware of our sin. Our, our sin hurts us. And we feel like we might deserve punishment for our sin. But I know that he has shed his blood to forgive those sins. And Revelation says, I'm freed. I'm freed from all of that. I'm freed, most importantly, from the punishment, right? Freed from that guilt, freed from the punishment by his blood. So, at the end of time, at the end of days, I'm, I'm free, free from judgment. I'm free from punishment. I hope you believe that in your heart. Look at what John is doing. He's spelling out the gospel. Right? He's spelling out the good news right here at the beginning of the book of Revelation, on the very first page. And, and gospel, that's just a fancy $2 word for good news. The good news is that what Jesus did on the cross, he paid for your sins, you are loved, you are free from sin, you are free from the power of sin. Sin no longer controls you, it has no power over you, and you are free from judgment. All of that should be good news. Verses 5 and 6. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom of priests, to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So Jesus is the one who loves you. Jesus is the one who saves you. But then we ask, well, who am I? Who am I in this relationship? Book of Revelation says you are a kingdom. And not just any kingdom, you're a kingdom of priests. That's a very familiar biblical term. It's said here in the Old Testament. It's said in the New Testament. 1 Peter 2.9, in the letters, it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own. So here again, more assurances, right? You can do it. We spoke about that in lesson one. You can do it. The Bible says you're a priest. And what does a priest do? A priest has permission to come into the presence of God. A priest stands as uh, a representative of their faith. And the Bible says, that's you. That's you. You know, sometimes when you're sick or a family member's sick or you're worried about something, uh, people will come into my office and they'll ask me for prayer. You know, God doesn't listen to my prayers any more closely than yours. I don't have a special membership badge that you don't. Before the cross, before all of that, 
access to God was very limited and the information was limited. Things felt more secret. God was behind a curtain. God was in a temple. But when Jesus died, the Bible records that that separation was lowered. That temple curtain was split in two and now access to God is available to everyone. A priest is a symbol that we have access to God now. And, and we're all priests. I don't have to look to someone to pray for me or to intercede for me. I don't need to confess my sins to a specific person. We are all priests. Revelation 1 verse 7 says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. So here at the end, John says, Everyone will see him, and everyone will mourn over him. Verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. That means the first and the last, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The voice that John hears says, I am A all the way to Z. I am the entire alphabet, right? I'm everything in between. And if we want to know, well, okay, who's speaking right now? Is this, is this still Jesus? We kind of skip down in the page to verse 17 to get that piece of information. It says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me saying, fear not. I am the first and the last and the living one. I died and behold, I'm alive forevermore. So I'll end the same way I began. Who is speaking, right? We always think that Revelation is a difficult book or that it's hard to understand, but come on. You know from reading that verse exactly who is talking. The one who died and who is alive again? That's Jesus, right? That is Jesus. And he's also called Lord God. Because like we said from the first lesson, Revelation is a peek at who Jesus is in heaven. Not just his earthly form, but this is his heavenly form. We're going to start seeing Jesus in a whole different light. And I think that's fantastic because, you know, we're, we're so used to seeing the gospel stories and seeing Jesus as this, you know, human man who can be touched, who gets dirty, who gets hungry, who gets angry. But Revelation is this huge picture of the Lion of Judah, the Messiah who sits on the throne, the Messiah who saves us and who loves us and who listens to our prayers. Um, yeah, Jesus is everything. He is everything. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.